Good evening. It's November 15th, 2013. My name is Matthew Ogden, and I would like to welcome you to this evening's broadcast of our live webcast on LaRouchePack.com featuring Mr. Lyndon LaRouche. Um, tonight I'm joined in the studio by Dennis Mason, and uh, we will, at a later point in this program, be presenting a graphical presentation of a series of uh, graphs and charts which are, uh, were commissioned by Mr. LaRouche to document the state of the economic collapse after five years of the presidency of Barack Obama. But before we reach that point, um, we're going to begin tonight's broadcast with a question which has come in from a institutional placed contact out of Washington, D.C., who has a specific question uh, to pose to Mr. LaRouche. So let me begin by reading that question. Mr. LaRouche, this is a two-part question dealing with the United States economic situation. First, a question concerning Glass-Steagall. For the past several months, with the government shut down and then the fiasco around Obamacare, attention has been diverted away from the fight for Glass-Steagall. Yet, in the past week, there appears to be a revival of attention to the issue of Glass-Steagall. We had the speech early in the week by Senator Elizabeth Warren at the Roosevelt Institute event in the United States Senate, which generated a great deal of news coverage. She prominently featured the urgency of a return to Glass-Steagall. And then some support, which has come in from a former Republican governor from North Dakota, and even from a prominent hedge fund manager. Please give us your assessment of the fight for Glass-Steagall. How do you see this fight unfolding in the immediate weeks ahead? And second, a question on the plight of the American people. In recent years, there has been a clear pattern of a decline in income for a large percentage of American households. Combined with the doubling of energy prices over the past five years, this has squeezed many working families out of the middle class and into poverty. As your so associates have documented, the actual rate of unemployment, even for college graduates, is far higher than the official, official statistics claim. What is the condition of the American economy and how does this relate to your campaign for Glass-Steagall? If I'm a little creaky, don't let it bother you. <laughs> it bothers me enough already. For you. Now, the, there are two questions and they are related, but I'll treat them as uh, distinct because they're complementary. First of all, what has happened during the past week is the actual downfall of this uh, uh, president is underway. It could be reversed under certain extraordinary circumstances, but those circumstances are not likely. So the, with the first thing we uh, at is the point is without Glass-Steagall, the coming crash, deep crash, of the United States economy could not be stopped. It would be a disaster, a homicidal quality of disaster for the American people coming out of this period. So therefore putting Glass-Steagall in its initial form, in its for formal form, not with adjustments of this and that, but just straight Glass-Steagall based on the Franklin Roosevelt policy, that is what is needed and that is the only thing that will save the American people now now, this has a complementary feature to it, the unpopularity of President Obama. His, in the recent week, and especially the recent days, Obama has fallen at a precipitous rate. He's ready to be virtually thrown out of office at of some early time, a fairly immediate time. Now, that means that we, have a, we are closer to Glass-Steagall than most people have ever thought we would become in recent years. But if we put in Glass-Steagall, there are other things that have to happen on the basis of installing Glass-Steagall. And that's what is very important. We, we are now essentially bankrupt. 
the United States is bankrupt. And what happens in Wall, with the Wall Street funds and similar kinds of things just are the content of the bankruptcy. Now, what was planned and has been planned in Europe and in the United States and elsewhere was actually a policy of genocide which was generated some years ago officially and repeatedly by Her Majesty the Queen of England. The intent here, as you see it in the laws that have been enacted under Obama in particular, but also what was happening even earlier under George W. Bush, Jr., is that there was a plan to lower the population of the United States and the planet. And the, for the planet as a whole, the plan has been. The policy is now underway. The policy is to reduce the human population of the planet from 7 billion persons to one at a rapid rate. And this is on the Queen's own immediate perspective. So therefore, what has happened is the whole structure is already in place, especially under the second term of Obama, which has been an accelerating rate of collapse. And the situation is, for the moment, apparently hopeless. The, the death rate will be accelerated rapidly. So therefore, while it's necessary to put Glass-Steagall into place, we have to understand what the relationship is between Glass-Steagall as renewed and the prevention of a general, presently ongoing collapse, which would be a mass murderous collapse in effect. What already in process, internationally, in the transatlantic region, the bankruptcy of governments is in process. General bankruptcy hopeless bankruptcy. What has happened in Greece, for example, in Spain and Portugal is simply the harbinger of what was going on in all Europe. So therefore, we have to take Klaus Stiegel as a twofold characteristic. First of all, it's the only way we can stop this problem. The only way we can save the United States and save other nations too, by our example. That's one part. But the other thing is that we have to immediately create new institutions to replace the, the fill out the bankruptcy. That was Euro European, the European nations, most of them are already hopelessly bankrupt. The United States is technically bankrupt, supported only by a, a cover sheet of fictitious values. There is no, there is no solid support for the recovery of the United States. Therefore, though, although the establishment of Glass-Steagall will immediately keep, create a platform which enables us to begin reorganizing, but we can't just sit there with Glass-Steagall. We have to implement the implications of Glass-Steagall rapidly because otherwise what's already in place, in place lost jobs, for example, l lost incomes, disastrous losses in incomes. All of these things are ongoing and will continue to go on going. Now, you go back to Franklin Roosevelt then, who designed this whole system. He set into motion very rapidly a series of recovery measures which saved the United States and brought it from disgrace into the most powerful nation on the planet. And it was done only under Franklin Roosevelt. Nothing good was done by his successor. Hmm? So now we're going to, what are the measures then which have to be done now to back up the passage of, Glass, of this Glass-Steagall law? Hmm? That means that we're going to have to create reforms. First of all, the existence of Glass-Steagall as a new law will cancel the role of much of the role of the, of the banking system inside the United States. That is the, Glass, the uh, gambler banking system, the Wall Street system. So Wall Street will be going into a bankruptcy because we're, the first thing with, with Glass-Steagall, you're going to end the ability of Wall Street to loot the United States and its people. But now we have to do as Franklin Roosevelt did in his time to follow up the, the enactment of Glass-Steagall with a federal support for recovery. In other words, we need to have a stop the, the bleeding, but we also have to have a recovery program like Franklin Roosevelt's recovery program, which means we're going to have to create a, ca a capital fund of national banking, national banking, 
not, glad, not this crazy stuff we're doing out in Wall Street. But we're going to have to, okay, federal credit will be used uh, under discretion to fund employment and related programs, education programs included, in order to rebuild the economy of the United States for the benefit of the people of the United States. There is now no means to organize a re real recovery of that type. Once Glass-Steagall is done, then we can use the federal law to establish provisions of a credit system and the type of credit programs, rescue programs that Franklin Roosevelt did during the 1930s and beyond, which enabled us to meet the challenge of World War II. So that's where we stand, and that's the way you have to look at this thing. So this idea of going, you have to have two steps. You can't do the credit system, or the Roosevelt-style credit system measures, without having Glass-Steagall. Once you have Glass-Steagall, you can't grow beyond that point without these measures. And this is the, in short, there's a lot more explaining, explaining to do about this thing, but this, in short, is the only program. This comes ominously, in one sense, on the fact that President, uh, the current President, Obama, is plummeting in his, in his popularity. He's coming apart. And don't get too close to him, it might smell bad. <laughs>